Hello everyone and welcome to this my video on matrix inverse, the determinant and the matrix equations, part of the year 12 general maths course. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Lovely to see you if you are new and goodness if you are an old hand at this. Also really good to see you. Before I get into the exciting stuff, can I ask a massive favor? Yes, you already know what's coming. Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel, please? Why? Well, basically nobody watches maths videos except my mother and maybe me and the dog who sits over here has got no choice. Um, and every time someone clicks subscribe, it just goes, do you know what, Darren? Keep going. Yeah, someone out there is watching this and it really does mean the world to me. So click uh, subscribe on YouTube and honestly, it does, it's just amazing. Uh, it's a little bit like, um, yes, uh, a little bit like chocolate. Makes me very, very happy. Right, okay, so what would I normally do at this point forward? I would explain our learning objectives, but you guys can read, and I'm fairly sure you can just pause the video if you need to, but we're pretty much gonna go through the fun stuff. Now, previously we've done all the boring stuff, if I'm being honest, and as I say to my groups over and over and over and over and over and over again, um, matrices are relatively simple. Well, this particular section of the course is, um, it gets a little bit more complicated later. And one of my students said to me recently, can't I just bang it in a calculator? Yes, you pretty much can just bang it in a calculator. But questions that I've got later on in this video from Vcar and in other videos will show you that actually banging it in a calculator is probably the worst thing you can do without understanding why you're doing it. All right, so we've worked out previously, we can add and subtract, we can multiply by a scalar, and we can multiply matrices, and all these videos are live on, oh yeah, you know where I'm going with this one, mathsguru.com, free to sign up, and downloadable resources, lesson notes, exam questions, yada, yada, yada. But I suppose the big question is, and I would have mentioned this previously, is how do you divide matrices? Well, you can't directly divide them. You can't put them into your calculator and say, hey, love, can you just divide these two, please? It's not possible, All right? But what we can do is use a bit of a trick. But before we do that, let's get onto something even more, well, not exciting at all, really. The inverse of a matrix. You're gonna to need to know how to do the inverse of a matrix to be able to understand how we trick uh, divide. So let's get into this first by first. Right, we know that we can express a matrix in the form like that. Normally it has a capital letter, equals, and then it has four numbers. One, two, three, four. And that's assuming I'm choosing a two by two matrix. For this part of the course, you're only gonna ever have to, by hand, do a two by two matrix, right? For everything else, you'll be fine to be able to use your calculator, and in fact, use your calculator for this. Now, the inverse of a matrix is expressed with a floaty minus one. You're gonna say, what on earth is you talking about, a floaty? Well, uh, it's a number, what floats, basically? Now, the inverse, as I just said, is expressed by uh, this a to the minus one. And then we've got an equal sign. And then we've got this really strange fraction here that goes in front of it. Well, one divided by, awesome. But what on earth is this a, d minus b, c rubbish? Well, that rubbish, and I call it rubbish because I can, yeah, is basically telling you what we do is we multiply the opposite corners and subtract them. That's literally it. This under here actually has a very important name and it's called the determinant, but we'll come back to that in a moment. So to get this fraction, we do one divided by, take the opposite corners, multiply them together and subtract them. That's what it means by AD minus BC. And then we multiply that by a rearranged version of my uh, matrix. Now you're probably sitting there going, why on earth do I want to do this? Well, because it's in the course, and basically it's going to be important. And you're probably gonna say, but why does this work? And it's at that point I'm gonna say, do you know what, I don't really know. And there are way better mathematicians out there who will, but I haven't got a clue. And so we're just gonna leave it at that, really, to be honest with you, just let's learn it as a rule. So how do we get this sort of moved around matrix? Well, what you should notice is the D, which was this D here, and the A, which is that A there, seem to have swapped places. So that's exactly what you do. To be able to get this matrix here, you take the top left and the bottom right and you literally swap them places. What do we notice here? We've got this minus C, and that was a C, and minus B, and that was a B. So what you do to the other corners is you multiply them by minus one. Now I'm gonna make that clear because a lot of people just say, oh, you're bang a minus sign in front of it. No, you don't, you multiply by minus one. If this value here was negative two, 
then it would change to two, all right? So a minus becomes a plus, and a plus becomes a minus. Now, those of you who are using summary notes, which hopefully all of you are, then basically here is sort of the shortcut on how to do it. To get our inverse matrix, which becomes important later, you multiply the opposite corners, subtract them, and put them under a fraction. You swap the corners, and you reverse the signs of the C and B. Okay, good, we've done that. So here's an example. Show that matrix A and B are inverses. We can do that, right? So I'm gonna write my A is equal to two, three, three, five. It's a very interesting color blue. I don't know what I was doing there. Probably my daughter's been coloring in. Uh, A equals that. So what's the first thing we do? Well, if we look here, we write A to the minus one. There's my A to the minus one. I'm now gonna work out my determinant. Now again, the fraction is not the determinant and lots of people get very tricked by that. The determinant is just this number on the bottom and it has a really important role in a moment. So I'm gonna take my opposite corners and multiply them together. So I'm gonna do one on, write that in there. Two times five, so those are my opposite corners, give me 10. And I'm gonna subtract from that three times three which gives me nine. Now we like that and hopefully you'll realize why in just a moment. But again, be very, very careful if this is a minus sign because it would be three times minus three or minus three times three, which is minus nine. And then this would become a plus, all right? And again, hopefully you understand why. So we've done that whole fractional malarkey. What do we do now? Well, we swap my corners. So these two here swap corners, that becomes a five and that becomes a two. And then what happens here? Well, if they're positive, they become negative. If they're negative, become positive. Because that's a positive three, I'm gonna write minus three there. That's gonna be minus three there. Right, so does that look like my answer? Well, no, not really. What about this fraction here? Well, if we simplify that, that becomes one on one. Well, one divided by one becomes one, so I don't need to write that anymore. And so it becomes five, negative three, negative three, and two. ka -ching. I have shown that. Little bit of a dance? Yeah. Okay, I look a bit weird doing that. Let's not do that again.